Okay, LaWanda Hawkins, can you hear me out in that park where you're sitting? Yes, I can. LaWanda, it's very nice for you to join us today on Why We Do What We Do, which is an interview series that we started here at Marcy's Law for All. And I know that you're very familiar with Marcy's Law. Oh, most definitely, Peter. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for all that you do. And, and you look like you're in a beautiful park there in San Pedro, California. And um, before we get into all that you're doing and all that you've done on behalf of crime victims and their families, could you tell us a little bit about where you just came from today, this morning? Well, I just came from the food bank picking up food so that I'll have it this weekend to give away to families who are in need. We'll be doing this out here in San Pedro at 1039 West Elberon. We have a um, back to school giveaway. We're gonna be doing COVID-19 testing. And this is all going on this Saturday from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. And it's free to all and everyone's invited. You don't need no ID. All you need to do is show up. And you, you really have become an incredible force in the victims' rights movement. And you talk about it, and you and I have had this conversation. It's a basically a fraternity that no one wants to be a part of. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how you first got involved with Justice for Murdered Children. I wanna bring you back to 1995. Um, it was uh, December 7th, 1995 in the morning. Um, could you tell us a little bit about how that day unfolded for you? Yeah, that was a strange day. Um, I'll never forget getting on the 110 freeway and me hearing um, someone um, on the radio, they were announcing about someone being murdered, them finding a body. They don't say murder. They said they found the body on the docks. And when I'm getting on the 110 freeway, I'm praying for them. I'm praying for whoever it is, whoever family it is. I'm like, hey, I feel sorry, all this and that. And uh, I'm praying for them and I'm going on to work. Yeah. And with my business, yeah, listening to talk radio. Have, yeah. Just, yeah. Not never thinking anything up. And uh, yeah, I'll never forget that day, December the 7th, 1995. And then later on that day, I received a call, unfortunately, from my husband, Paul, asking me to come home. And he's telling me that I need to come home because there is an issue with um, Reginald and law enforcement. And I'm like, what type of issue? And whatever it is, because Paul worked in law enforcement, why can't you handle it? Um, yeah. And so I just couldn't understand why would he want me to come home? And he assisted that it was urgent and that I needed to come home. And the whole way home, it never clicked in my mind what was going on. And I get home, and um, when I pull in, I see all these police cars in front of my unit, and I still don't know what's going on. And when I got in, and they told me that bullshit, and they told me that crap about my baby, um, I'll never forget. I went to my knees and said, this got to be a joke. Y'all got to be lying. Um, it can't be my child. Um, how could this be? And I didn't believe it. And um, I just, just couldn't believe it. And I made them go take a picture of my son and they had to bring it back and show it to me because I just couldn't believe. I just thought they had got my son mixed up with another black kid in town because there were so few here in 1995. And so I, I just felt as though they had just put them in a category. And just, yeah, and yeah, I'll never forget that. And my life has never been the same since that day, since they told me that bullshit. Well, I, I want I want to ask you. Um, you you came from. Um, you said you were talking to your husband. And your husband worked for the district attorney's office at the time. Oh yeah, L.A. County. And and you were working in and the L.A. County district attorney's office is a is a totally different place today than it ever has been. And we could probably get into that at at, at some point. And I know you're working very hard uh, to make sure, especially with the the environment that people find themselves in today victims and their families with the current situation in LA County, your voice is even more important. And uh, because it's more important, um, everyone knows your reputation, the more important the, uh, the, the environment becomes, the stronger you are and the stronger your voice is. Um, you came from the south side of Chicago uh, with, with your, your husband and moved to San Pedro because you wanted to have a better environment to raise a family, is that right? Um, yes, I came, Reginald and I came from the south side of Chicago, and we did, yeah, we came here for a better life. Where I came from, the community I came from in Chicago, 
like I said, I went to high school. No one, in, I had never had anyone, not one friend had ever went to jail or was ever murdered, ever had a gun or anything like that. And I came from the South side, from Jeffrey Manor, and we didn't have that issue. Yeah, we did not have, it. yeah. I had people, yeah, family in the project. We just didn't see it. I guess, I, I, I don't know. We just didn't come from that area. We didn't come from that. And Reginald didn't come from that. And it took a while. And after several months, it became pretty clear to you that, that this case uh, was not going to get solved anytime soon. And that happened December 6, 1995. Here we are um, over, over, over 30 years, uh, 20, 25 years later. And this case still remains unsolved. Um, let, let me ask you, uh, with justice for murdered children and justice for homicides, uh, justice for homicide victims, what do you focus on? Is it unsolved homicides? We focus on murder, just, in the, just, just murder, because it's so much here in LA County. We have it on a day-to-day -day basis. We don't, we're not, yeah, every corner you look at is South Central. There is a memorial for someone being murdered. So we just focus on that alone. If we can prevent that, then we won't have these unsolved. If we can just start dealing with just that, prevention for murder. Because I'm a gangbanger don't mean I'm a murderer. And because I'm a murderer don't mean I have a gangbang. These are two separate issues. And I know they like to lump it together just for some reason. And it somehow desensitizes the crime. Anyone could be a victim of, a, of this crime called murder. Anyone. It doesn't yeah. make a difference. And I learned that by being in Justice for Homicide Victims, being with Marcella Leach. Yeah, she yeah, she showed me and taught me, her and Colleen, that anyone can be a victim of this crime. Yeah, and I, I want to talk to you about your special relationship with Marcella Leach. Um, people talk about, when they talk about the United States of America, a lot of times they talk about the founding fathers. And with respect to the victims' rights movement, I've seen that there's a group that that we refer to sometimes as the as sometimes as the founding mothers and Colleen Campbell uh, she's been a, a, a uh, an, in, an interview subject on this she's been a guest on on this show uh, and Colleen Campbell referred me to Jane Buffard who I know uh, is one of the other founding mothers of uh, of the victims rights movement and they both talked a lot about Lawanda Hawkins and as as one of their other one of their other teammates, and you all talked about the beauty and the joy and the beautiful soul and beautiful heart of Marcella Leach as someone that inspired you. Could you tell all of us a little bit about how you got to know Marcella Leach? Oh, yes. First of all, this is Marcella's week, her birthday week, you guys. So this is, yeah, this is her birthday week. Yeah, we would have been celebrating that she was here. We would all be down in Orange County having some type of event for her, for her birthday. Um, she is truly missed. I met Marcella, um, she wrote, she read about Reginald and seen it on TV and she wrote me a handwritten letter like people don't even do anymore. She did one of those, a handwritten letter to me telling me that she was you know, sorry about my son being murdered, her heart went out and she invited me to this event in Beverly Hills. And when I get to this event, you all don't know me, I'm coming from a whole different world. And when I get to this event in Beverly Hills, I'm thinking these people, I don't fit in. I'm thinking no way do I fit in with these people. And I'm driving around the block and um, Bill's outside. Bill got that mustache that go around like this and he's outside smoking a cigarette. When you and, refer to Bill, you refer to, this is Bill Buffard, who is Jane Bill Buffard. Buffard. Oh yeah. And he's standing there and um, he gets me to stop my car and gets out the car and I talk to him and he, um, we smoke a cigarette together and he convinces me to go in with me, puts his arms around me and makes me feel comfortable. And he walks me into Dina and Marty's house, Dina and Marty Singer's house. And we go into this mansion and um, these people are sitting at this big long table. E Entertainment is in there filming these people. And I'm like, what the heck? And he brings me in and introduces me to this group of people. Well, these people have been my family from that day. I was scared to go in. Like, like I said, I went around the block, kept thinking I didn't fit in. These people ain't gonna understand me. This is Beverly Hills. I'm coming from South Central. Yeah, it just wasn't gonna make a mix. Well, when I went in there and met these people and Marcella, and Bob sitting at that table, Bob Leach and Marcella. And when they told, she introduced and said who I was and that she had wrote me, 
oh my God, they were open arms. Every story was like they were telling my story. They were talking my language. They were saying what I was scared to say. They were saying it and mean it and saying, oh no, people will be held accountable. No, this is not going down. We are, this, yeah, they were saying what I was feeling, but they were letting it be said. And they were showing how to do it. It was like, what happened? Yeah, who did? Where did it happen? Yeah, they were all in. And I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Oh, I, I, yeah. I was just like, no, yeah, no way. And, and this, yeah, this Ooh, was, that a group was I couldn't feel so comfortable. I can't explain it. And, and this was a group of people who uh, you said Bob put his arms around you and, and, brought, and brought you in. And this was a group of people that formed the core and continue to formed the core of justice for homicide victims. Is that right? Oh yeah, justice for homicide victims has been around. Oh yeah, this justice for homicide victims started with Marcella Leach and Ellen Dunn. And, and Ellen Dunn was a um, lady whose um, daughter was murdered too. And they, them got to, they got together and oh yeah, justice for homicide victims has been around. A lot of things would have never been if it wasn't for justice for homicide victims. They are the group that got this stuff started. And I thank God for them. And, <laughs> Thank and, God and, for Marcella. And and to put to put this in perspective for those who aren't necessarily familiar with Marcy's Law and the origin of Marcy's Law, uh, Marcella Leach, the person that we're talking about, and the person that you're talking about, who brought you in and taught you so much, and and served as your inspiration. Um, Marcella Leach is the mom of Marcy Nicholas, who was murdered in 1983. Who for whom Marcy's Law is named. And you, you met Marcella Leach and you also met uh, Dr. Nicholas. Um, oh yeah, both of them. I know them, they're my friends. And I just met them, I know them. Marcella taught me how to fight. People think they know how to fight. Marcella showed me both, yeah, ball up your fist. She showed me the power of the pen. She showed me, yeah, how to use the phone and hold somebody up. She showed me how to fax in and tell Oh, yeah, she told me how to go in front of your place and protest. Yeah, she taught me how to fight. Yeah, don't, yeah, she told me, and I will never stop fighting. Yeah, yeah she and, wants me to fight. And the image that, the, the image that you describe about being outside of that mansion, and you said to yourself, this is not the right place and I don't belong here. And then Bob put his arms around you and brought you in. You've described that group that you met that night as your family and your, your instant family and your forever family. And it's, it's really incredible the work that you have done with that group since then. Could, could you describe uh, what you um, have done with respect to the billboard project specifically that you were telling me about? All the billboard project, but when, when Marcella was allowed, we were putting the billboards up to let people just see that anyone could be a victim of a murder because people were trying to stereotype. They were trying to say that only a certain group, that it only happened in this area. But when Marcella said, Lamanda, put them up, show everybody. And that was the first time we started putting up the billboards. Then at that time, I'll never forget the first billboard we put up. Um, former Governor Jerry Brown came to our first billboard. He came to the uh, unveiling, Governor Jerry Brown, to our first billboard unveiling. Now we put up billboards for the unsolved homicides. We try to make people see that these unsolved, someone knows besides the murderer and the victim who committed these murders. And we ask you, do you know who murdered us? And we show the faces. We usually show two males and two females. And we mix the races up so people can see it's us. It's not people from out of space. It's everyday people being murdered by everyday people. And so we try to project that. And yeah, thanks to Justice for Homicide Victims and Justice for Murdered Children, us working together to put that up. Um, it, it's, it's really worked. Um, so far, we have taken five victims off of there who cases have, are in the court system right now. So the billboards do work. Yeah, so you, um, you, you could actually point to tangible results. You have actually, your efforts have resulted in solved cases at this point. Yes, we can point to that. Yes. Yeah, and when, when you talked about, you and I have talked about the fact that, uh, that, that, this, that this terrible crime of murder spares nobody. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what your socioeconomic background is and, 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 and whatever your means are, race, 
And you, you, you talked about it, it doesn't spare anyone, whether you're from the top of the hill or the bottom of the hood. And that's so true. And that's what's up. Vicky, her son was murdered right before my name, like Nail. And she would always say that. Yeah, from the top of the hill to the bottom of the hood, it don't make a difference. We're all affected by this crime called murder. Even, I don't, it's very rare that you can be in a group and say, hey, anyone in this crowd, everyone, you ask, anyone in this crowd had a loved one murder, majority of the people gonna raise their hand. That's not, accept, that should not be. That should not be. But that is what we're seeing on a day-to-day -day basis. That the majority of the people have been affected by this crime called murder. We talk about this COVID-19, which is serious, but murder is taking out a lot of people too. Yeah, and we're the, losing a lot of them. And the the other the other component that you talked about was trying to bring the law enforcement community and the community together. And you 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 brought me back to when, in fact, it did happen um, when your son was murdered. And the environment in LA County at the time was right after the OJ Simpson case. Um, and you talked about how it was really tough to try to get things done because of the division in the community with the community and law enforcement not necessarily working together. Um, could you tell us the importance, especially these days in LA County, of, of, of victims' rights and how important it is the work that you do and we all do to try to fight on behalf of victims and their families. It's extremely important. If we don't fight for victims' rights, victims don't have a voice. And when you don't have a voice, then you're, you're just discounted in the system. And it's only fair that victims have a voice. We were part of everything. How does the judicial system work when you only got public defenders? No one's representing crime victims. In LA County, we're seeing that every day in the courtroom where there's two public defenders and there's no representation for crime victims. And the person who's supposed to be representing us in the courtroom is a public defender. How, what an insult. It's like you, the fox over the chickens and didn't expect the chickens to be okay? No way. No well, way. What? This is LA County right now. Yeah. And so it's yeah. very important that we all work, learn how to work together. Um, like you said, in 1995, we had outrageous homicides and it was a division. But right now, with law enforcement, they're trying to unite with the community. They're coming up with community programs to assist the community. They're trying to put their feet on the ground. But media somehow focuses in on the bad and ain't showing the good parts. Because we do have a relationship with law enforcement in all communities throughout LA County. Every community has some form of relationship with some form of law enforcement, but it's not being focused on. It's only focused on the bad part of it. And, Ca and California, as, as we all know at Marcy's Law, was really the, it was the birthplace of Marcy's Law. And you and Marcella, God rest her soul, and Dr. Nicholas uh, were some of the original signers of Marcy's Law. Um, could you tell us a little bit about the efforts, uh, your efforts, when you say you kept in touch with Marcella after your first meeting with her, and she told you a little bit about what she was going to try to do and what Dr. Nicholas was going to try to do with Marcy's Law. Tell us a little bit about how uh, you got involved with Marcy's Law and, and all that you did to make it a reality in California. Well, Marcella and Nick brought me in on Marcy's Law, but Marcella had told me about her experience, what she had experienced in the grocery store, running into these people and the different things that she had experienced going into the courts. See, we do court support. So we go into the courtrooms with these with murder victims' families and we see things that are just unacceptable. Sometimes we made to sit outside the courtroom. They telling us that we're going to be a witness knowing all the time we're not. Yeah, we are not allowed to wear our murder victims pictures. We're not allowed to cry. Just crazy stuff. Just real crazy stuff. Because if they see us crying, they'll ask us to leave the courtroom. Yeah, it, it, it's just real weird stuff. And Marcella tapped in on. And Marcella was a good writer. Let me tell you, she was a teacher. So she knew how to write. And so she knew how to address the issues and how to put it in words that people could understand. And she addressed those issues that she felt as though were discriminating against us, where we were being treated like, yeah, disrespected. Yeah, she, yeah, she was adamant. Some of us was getting um, 
restitution, some of us wasn't. Some people, we, some people said, well, I don't think they could. Some said they would. Yeah. And she was saying, no, across the line, every crime victim's going to be entitled to restitution. Every crime victim, regardless to where you live at, needs to be treated with dignity and respect. Yeah. She just put, she just started throwing down lines on their butt. And they were like, what? Yeah, you heard her. And she meant what she said. And she, put, and then Nick, oh my God, when Nick got in it, when they were, yeah, everybody went against us because they didn't believe her. But shoot, she meant what she said. She meant it and she put it into law. Yeah. yeah. And the people voted it in. It wasn't just somebody saying, oh, we're going to write it in. No, it was on the ballot the same time Obama was running for the first time for the president of the United States. This is on the ballot here in the state of California. Yeah. And, and yeah. what history? <laughs> It was. It was. You made you made history. And what you did now has echoed throughout the country because of all the states that we've gotten Marcy's Law passed and continue to with the help and the the incredible energy and the incredible voices of people like you in the heart. When you were talking about Dr. Nicholas, you said and you call him Nick, uh, you said Nick, Nick has a heart. And oh. because of Dr. Yeah. Nicholas's heart. Um, we, we strive every day to continue to try to give victims fair and equal rights and constitutional rights, uh, like some of the ones that you spelled out. Uh, and you, you've worked now with um, uh, Justice for Homicide Victims, and, um, and, and one of the things that you do uh, is you have uh, meetings, and you actually, because getting Marcy's Law passed is one thing, but then telling people and informing them of their constitutional rights is so important. And that's one of the things that you do with um, some regular meetings that you have. Oh, most definitely. I sit on the executive board of Justice for um, Homicides Victims. And what Nick did by getting behind Marcy's Law and implementing it, because he's seen the injustice. He's seen it with his own sister's case. And he just didn't think about his own sister. He thought about everyone. Yeah, because he could have just went for his own, but he's like, no, nah, bringing this person in. And he's looked at it. And he realized we were all being taken advantage of by a system. And he stepped in. I, yeah, Nick stepped in and made it happen. He was like, oh, no, they ain't going to take you all down like that. No, they're not going to do you all like that. And if you know Nick, Nick got a heart. He is about the people, especially crime victims. Yeah, we got his heart. <laughs> we his heart. Yeah. And he, and he stands behind it. He, yeah, this will not go down on his shift. And I love it that he's going from state to state, getting it implemented for others. So it just wasn't for us. And that's awesome. Yeah, because yeah. he didn't have to do that. We are blessed. We it. It's a fight. It's a fight. People don't want us to have these rights. I don't know why, but people fight against it. Yeah, we, we are blessed to have Dr. Nicholas as our leader and to have, like you, we were saying before, who I refer to as the founding mothers of the crime victims movement, um, like you. Um, your humility uh, is something that precedes you everywhere you go. Uh, people wouldn't know uh, all the incredible work that you do. You've been featured in People Magazine. Uh, you've been talked about really all over the country in, at, at, at this point. Um, nobody uh, can try to take advantage of victims and their families without LaWanda Hawkins trying to do something about it. And for that, we're, we're very grateful. And you, you were also uh, honored um, back in 2015 by the Attorney General, U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder at the National Office for Victims of Crime. They honored you with the, uh, at their annual ceremony uh, with the Volunteer for Victims Award. Um, can you tell, tell us a little bit about that? That was awesome. I have to thank the LA County Deputy District Attorney, Kathy Cady. And she's the one out here fighting right now. Her and a couple of other former LA County Deputy District Attorneys are out here, they retired, and they're fighting for crime victims here in LA County at no cost. They're doing it absolutely free from the heart because they feel as though what happened to us with this new district attorney, I ain't gonna go there, with him and his actions has created a problems for crime victims in the courtroom. And I mean a serious problem. So she's in there, Kathy Katie, in there fighting for us every day. Um, in regards to <laughs> the question again was regarding the Marcy's Law. No, regard, regarding, the, um, re regarding the award that you got, um, it, the National uh, Crime Victims Award that you got from U.S. Attorney Eric Holder. 
Yes, and that was because of Kathy Katie. She wrote in and explained it to them um, what the work that I was doing down here. And I couldn't believe it. They recognized me and they took us to Washington, D.C. We all went there and um, I couldn't believe it. That was um, Eric Holder's last of fish, um, of big speech. And it was for us. And I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it again. History. <laughs> I'm like, no way. And this is all again because of my relationship with Marcelo Leach. And you all call him Dr. Nick. I, Nicholas, I call him Nick because I know him as a friend. Um, and yeah. Yeah, he is. He has. He is. Is and has become and continues to be a friend of all victims of crime and their families, uh, as as you have. And you you did mention. And you said you don't want to go there, but you did mention the current state of affairs with the district attorney in L.A. County. Um, but I think one thing that we can all agree on um, without getting into too much specifics, uh, but just because we only have a couple of minutes, is it is now almost more important than ever that people like Lawanda Hawkins and people like Jane Buffard and Marcy's Law, our entire organization, stand up for victims and stand up for victims' families to make sure that they have fair and equal treatment and balance the scales of justice like you described to me, which is why you've gotten into this in the first place, uh, and to make sure that people know what their constitutional rights are as victims. And nobody can take those away because like you said, the people of California voted for that. The people of California spoke and they want victims to have constitutional rights and they want families of victims to be able to enjoy the constitutional rights that have been voted voted in. Most definitely. The victims vote. And that's the state. And what's happening right here is just the county. And we keep reminding them state Trump's county. And we voted for this. And we're expecting um, the district attorney to uphold the California <laughs> Crime Victims Bill of Rights, AKA Marcy's Law. We're expecting them to uphold it. And yeah. when you violate us, um, you're violating our rights. And we all should be against that. Either if you don't like us, you still should be fighting for our rights. Regardless, because even if I don't agree with what you're doing, but if it's your rights, I'm down with you. I'm gonna do whatever I can because that's only right. And for people to think they have the right to violate crime victims' rights is just unbelievable. To be cheating us with disrespect and treating us like we don't have a voice in the courtroom and you send a public defender to represent us instead of a district attorney. <laughs> yeah. And then expect us to be okay with that and say, well, the people voted for that, for crime victims not to have a voice. I don't know anybody in LA County who voted for that, for crime victims not to have a voice in the court system well because that's what's happening well with your continued help i don't think that anyone's going to be able to get away with that in la county or anywhere in the state of california and quite frankly probably in the country um i want to make sure that everyone knows how important the work that you're doing is for justice for murder children and justice for homicide victims and to keep their eye out for your billboards keep their eye out for all the work that you do in the community try to help you as much as they can and I just wanted to close with a quote from um, uh, L.A. Police Captain Billy Brockway. And he's in charge at one point of the LAPD South Bureau Homicide Division. You talked about when you saw Bob Buffard outside of that house, the first meeting that you were invited to where you met Marcella Leach. And you said he put his arms around you. And symbolically and literally, it probably meant an enormous amount to you at that time. And you talked about how this is now became your family. Um, Billy Brockway's quote about you was, Lawanda Hawkins has put her arms around everybody. So I wanna thank you for putting your arms around everybody, Lawanda, all the work that you do and continue to do. We are blessed to have you in the victims' rights movement and let's stay in touch and keep it going. Thank you, Peter and Billy at LAPD. That's my friend, another one of my friends. Yeah, that is the good friend of mine. And he loves the community. That's what I'm saying. There's some good people out here. You just got to get to know them. Well, thank, thank you so much. And I'm so glad we got to know you and we will continue to keep the fight going. Th thanks, Lawanda. 
Thank you.